All right, let's move on to algebra very quickly. We need to develop some concepts in algebra so we know what the pieces are called. Here I have a 10. We played with this a little bit. And right next to it I have a bar where I don't know how many it is. There are no lines on this. And you see that here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And here it's just smooth because algebra is not a rough subject, it's a smooth subject. Here is 1. Maybe it's less than 1. We're not sure. Maybe it's 5. It could be more than 10. I mean, if you use our imagination, we can put lots of lines on this and it could be 15 or 20. It could be anything. It's always varying, always changing. In mathematics, we call this a variable and we need to name our variable. What should we name our variable? Always changing, always varying. Well, what are we going to call our variable? Hmm, let's call it X, since we don't know. Can any little child do this? Children like to do that. In fact, before they can write numbers, they can make an X. All right, so let's take our X's, and as we develop this, the children will hear that it's X, even if it's 3X or 5X or 6X, and play with them a little bit. Here, the symbol X plus another X, how many x is that? Or I can do it this way, x plus another x. How many x is that? Well, if I have an x and another x and I add them together, is it not visually obvious that all I have there is one, two x? In fact, here it's so clear, it's the same thing. Over here, it's the same as over here. X plus another X is just 2X. Now many college students have a hard time here when they see, or not college students, but high school. Well, sometimes college students, I've worked with them, that where'd the two come from? What's going on here? What happened? I have an X and another X. Uh, two of them? Well, no, we don't have an X square. We have one X and another X is just two X. All right, now all I've done is add another X. So here I have two X plus another X. How many X? How many there? Well, we can see quite clearly it's just three X, two X and another X, three X. And it becomes clear what we mean when we say that the one there is understood. All right, we spent a little time playing with X. Now we're going to do a three period lesson with all of these pieces in algebra. Normally we would spend a lot more time developing this piece right here, but because it's just a short demonstration and a one hour introduction, we're just going to tell you that this is an X, this is our friend X. Here is a unit. Now, this is also an X and it's smooth. Well, what is this? Well, it's an X. And what shape is that? A square. So we're going to call this one X square. And we write X square like this. It's X two ways. It's X this way and it's X this way. It's X by X. Here I have X and here I just have a unit. So what I have here is 1X, one 1X one square plus 1X plus 1. What if I did this? Well, now can we identify what we have? We have x squared, 3x, and 2. Now, a three-period lesson goes very simply and very quickly. This is, this is an x squared. This is x, or these are x's, and these are units. And I could write it down here to make my symbols match my manipulatives. Just with the blocks, this is x squared. This is x, this is 3x, and these are units. This is, now, you ask the student, show me which is the x. Show me the x squared. Show me a unit. And you can play back and forth. And then the third thing is simply, what's this? The student should be able to say x. What's this? x squared. 
Now you know too. So let's take these pieces, x squared, 3x, and 2, and do a quick problem in algebra where we're going to do polynomial division. All right, what we have here is still x squared, 3x, and 2. And I'm going to give you lots of information. I want you to make me a rectangle out of x squared, 3x, and 2. And I'm going to tell you that one side is x plus 2. Can you build me a rectangle like that? Should be familiar from the Boy Scout story. Let's see here. Put these two guys like this. And I'm putting this here. And that leaves a space for the green ones. Now, can you see that I have x plus 2 across? This really is x plus 2. Couldn't call it 3 because these aren't the same kind. I only count things that are same. I know that this one's called x, and here's two units. There they are. In symbolic form, using the symbols. Here is x plus Hmm. x plus 1. Can you see that this side is just x plus 1? x plus 1. Any little child can see that. And suddenly we're doing polynomial division and it's really just that easy. All right, can you see to solve this problem, all we had to do is count to 3. 1, 2, 3. We never got off this hand. We never got off this hand. Algebra, polynomial division, not difficult. Any young child with the blocks can see this. And in fact, they can draw this. Because when you get those three sheets of paper for the GMAT or the SAT or the ACT, it says, here's three white sheets of paper. Good luck. Now, once we've had a three-period lesson and we know what all the pieces are, let's apply this and just have a little fun adding some algebraic expressions. So here I'm having x squared, using the symbols, plus 3x plus 2. And here I have 2x squared plus 4x plus 4. I remember putting this on a board for a bunch of 7th graders. They went, oh, that's hard. We can't do that. Sure you can. Let's just draw them. Here's my x squared, 3x and 2. Here's my 2x squared, 4x and 4. And now all I've got to do is add them together. How many x squared? We'll count the big ones first. 1, 2, 3. What kind? 3x squared. Now how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. X. Because that's the kind. 7 of the X kind. 7X. And simply 6 units. Very simple, very easy once you can draw them. And some students will want to put a line here and draw it all together to match the symbols. But all we're doing is counting. All right. Let's do some more algebra where we just give you a little bit of information. And we want you to form a rectangle and count sides. We call this factoring. So let's take, again, x squared, 3x, and 2, and form a rectangle. And count the sides. I need x squared, 3x, And two, and I need to make a rectangle out of that. Now, with directed discovery, we give the children time to figure out how to make a rectangle out of these pieces all by themselves. But because we're doing a demonstration here, I'm just going to build it for you very quickly. Now, we can do it either way. This way, that's division. This way, is multiplication or factoring. What I've done is put one on the side, the rest on top, and that leaves room for these two little green guys to fit in there. And once again, all I have to do is count the sides. I can see that it's x plus 1 across, and it's x plus 2 up. And all I'm saying is that x squared, 3x, and 2, this whole rectangle, these are the sides, or the factors. All right, let's do a second problem in factoring. 
x squared, 4x, and 3. Here I have my x squared, 4x, and 3. And for little children, if we were doing these problems in succession, which we most likely would be, they have to figure out, well, the other one said 3x, and I would need another x, and I'd need another unit. Now, here I have one on the side, the rest on top, and that leaves a space for the green ones to fit in, as little kids like to say. So, if I form a rectangle and just count the sides, can you see here I have x plus 1 across? and x plus 3 up. Once again, we're only counting the same kind. x plus 1 by x plus 3. All right, let's do another problem in factoring where I give you x squared, 4x, and 3. And all we're going to do again is form a rectangle and count the sides. So here, I put 1 on the side and the rest on top. And that leaves a space for the green ones to fit in. And then all I have to do is count them. Let's see here. This side is x plus 1. x plus 1. And this side is x plus 3. Done. Now, some people get confused. Well, why isn't this 3x plus 3 over here? Or why, what are we doing? Well, remember, when we were counting 6s, we just counted the edges. If I had three sixes. It was 3 by 6. I didn't count the inside. I didn't go 12. I didn't count 6 or 9 in here. I just counted this edge. 3 by 6. It's the same thing in algebra. With this, we just count the edge. x plus 1, x plus 3. We factored it. We formed a rectangle and counted the sides. And all we're saying is that this is the same as this. This is the whole rectangle. These are the sides. Slightly way of looking at, different way of looking at algebra. Let's move on to another problem very quickly. We're just going to make it x squared, 5x, and 6 instead. What's that the same as? All right. So let's see here. I have x squared, 4x, and 3. And once again, if I'm a little child, I'm learning addition facts. Well, what do I need? I need another x. And I need three more green ones. In this case, I'm going to use these. But the child could have gotten out three more green ones to make a six. Now, form a rectangle count size. So if I put this here and put the rest of these on top, uh-oh, they're not going to fit. And you have to let the child discover this for himself. But now I've made a rectangle. x squared, 5x and 6. And we can learn all about factoring and all about how we can break up numbers. We can learn a lot more than just factoring in algebra by doing factoring in algebra. Can I count the sides? x plus 1, 2, x plus 1, 2, 3. Just counting the edges, I have x plus 2 and x plus 3. I've seen students in near tears because they had a difficult time using FOIL and other techniques and algorithms and rules. and It's this easy. Simply form a rectangle, count the sides. And once again, because we only have an hour here, I can't get into negative coefficients and so forth, but just you can see that we can teach the mathematics using these blocks very simply and easily. All right, let's talk about a problem in problem solving using algebra. What we have here is a moment in time expressed algebraically. Before this, we were doing factoring and polynomial division, but we were factoring and manipulating x without ever knowing what x is. That's part of the beauty of the algebra. Here, we have an equal sign, so we can discover what x is, because everybody wants to know, how, how do I find out what x is? Well, you need an equal sign, and you need to be able to tell a very simple story like this. What I have is Fred and Joe. And once again, we can only express one moment in time. So in this particular moment in time, Fred is five miles out of town, walking two miles an hour. Here, Joe is two miles out of town, so he's behind him, walking three miles an hour. How long does it take Joe to catch Fred? 
Well, let's see. Expressed this way, it's very hard for the students to see that these things really are the same, because they certainly don't look the same, and I don't see very much that's the same on both sides. But down here, we can see we have some stuff that's the same here, and we have some stuff that's the same here. So let's remove the stuff that's the same so we can discover what X is. So here I take two from here, and two from here, we remove the same stuff. Two from here, and two from here. Ah, X is the same as three. It really is that simple. So it took three hours for Joe to catch Fred. Now further, I can say that if X is three, then I can evaluate these expressions for three. Now let's do that in just a second. All right, now what we've done is simply discovered what X is. X was the same thing as three. So now I've replaced my X's with threes. So we can see, and this is a two-part problem, and many students have difficulty with the second part, that yes, it took three hours for him to catch Fred, for Joe to catch Fred, but how far out of town were they? Well, can you see that this is three, six, nine, plus two more, that's 11. And this is three, six, plus five more, and that's 11. 11 equals 11 is basically what that's saying. Now, we can see the problem and we can check and know that we got it right. Many students find that after they take a math test, they don't know how well they did. Whereas with Morton's in math, you know whether you got it right or not. Here we can see 11 equals 11 and x is 3. And problem solving really is this simple.